Uh, we've got quite a treat uh, first thing after lunch here. Um, it's uh, it's going to be uh, absolutely fascinating to watch. Um, but just to kind of give you a bit of an idea. Um, so Steve Bennett uh, is a, a businessman who's uh, been openly admits to spending most of his adult life seriously overweight. Um, and even though he is a bit of an adventurer, having walked to the North Pole, sailed across the Atlantic with his children, um, Steve uh, companies um, employ over a thousand people and his family set up the Colourful Life Foundation eight years ago and have built 21 schools in Africa, in India. Well done for that, Steve. Incredible. Um, and Steve has learned a lot about health while traveling the planet, and he is here today to give us an insight into his discoveries. Round of applause for Steve Bennett. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank you, Sam. Um, let me introduce you first of all to my father, who's going to come up and do a bit of an experiment. This is my dad, uh, Arthur. He's going to sit there. Dad's amazing. Um, sit down, Dad. You have, you, 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 79. Sadly, yeah. last year diagnosed with diabetes type 2. And uh, Tom, uh, one of my children, is going to sit over here for me if you can, Tom. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. So, before we get going, um, I want to tell you about when my seventh child, uh, Louis, was born. I am, I've got seven. I'm a bit greedy. Also, very, very lucky. <laughs> Uh, when he was born, I was approaching 50, I was very fat, very overweight, very unhealthy, and uh, like all parents, you want to be around to see your children grow up, be part of their life for just as long as you possibly can be around to see them, see your grandchildren. So about four years ago, I stepped back from my companies and said, right, I've got to figure out what the hell's going on with this obesity, because I couldn't work it out. I thought I was doing all the right things. So I surrounded myself with doctors and nutritionalists, and uh, in my wife's own words, I became a health book addict. Um, I read many, many great books. In fact, there's my seven children. Uh, apart from the one on the right, that's my wife. Uh, <laughs> any confusion, sorry. Uh, and a granddaughter now as well. Um, so I started to read, oh, that's me, very obese, um, a few years back. So I started to read some great books. Uh, Zoe's books have been very inspirational uh, and, and a great, great read. Now. One thing I haven't yet mentioned is I'm dyslexic. And uh, when I ran through her, who's here, uh, our next speaker is called Robert Holden, who's going to be a great, great speaker. But I thought it was this gentleman, uh, being uh, Patrick Holford, that's going to be here. So I was going to say, well done, Patrick, for a great book. <laughs> and uh, just before lunch, uh, I sat down with Patrick, who's coming up after me. And I said, uh, by the way, just finished reading your book on holiday. It's a fascinating read, to which Robert replied, fantastic, because I haven't written it yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, great book uh, by Robert. I just read uh, recently, Hacking the American Mind. Brilliant book. If you haven't read it, please do read it. So all in all, I have now devoured 427 books, even more white papers, and all in an attempt to find out what was going wrong with my body and what was going wrong with the bodies of lots of my friends and how can I stay around to, be, to see my kids grow up? How can I get more healthy? And what I've discovered on this four-year journey is quite horrific. I've discovered that we can't trust any information on food packaging at all. I've discovered all that low food stuff that everybody was recommending to me while I was obese for 20 plus years, rather than helping me lose weight, was keeping me fat. I discovered that in the UK, we have tripled our sugar intake in the last 50 years. And in the same last 50 years, this is where it gets quite frightening, adults in the UK have increased their body weight by two and a half stone average. For the younger ones in the audience, that's 16 kg, I think. Uh, but two and a half stone in 50 years, we've, we've grown in size. Well, that's more growth than in the previous two and a half million years. So something has gone very wrong in literally one or two generations. So much so, there is so much chronic illness in the UK today that some researchers are saying that Tom's generation can expect a life expectancy 
10 years shorter than my generation. And I find that, as a data seven, totally unacceptable how in this modern world where things are supposed to be getting better and better and better, where we've got great science and great doctors and, and, and everything's supporting us, how is it that his generation won't live as long as us? So I started to look at what went wrong in Great Britain. I started to look at what has caused this epidemic of chronic illness. And what I discovered was, in the main, it comes down to food. It comes down to the fact that we've stopped eating real, wholesome food. Instead, we now eat a lot of fake food. We eat a lot of food that's highly processed. We eat a lot of food that's hidden with sugars, and they've been engineered for addiction. But we can't really just blame the food companies, because food companies are companies, and companies, certainly in Great Britain, have a duty to their shareholders to maximize their return on investment. We might hope that one day companies might get a bit of a heart. We might hope that they change their ways and stop poisoning our children with their foods. But I think that's probably not going to happen in a long, long time. Not because they just decide to do it. You see, I think we've got to fight a different battle. I think we've got to choose our battle more wisely to make sure that our children out-survive us and not the other way around. So I decided to look back in history and look where it all started to go wrong. And it seems to me that we just pretty much cut and pasted in the 70s the American pyramid of healthy food. And that pyramid of healthy food is full of carbohydrates at the bottom. And uh, I have to be careful here, because I'm sure I stole this off, 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 off Dr. Zoe, um, uh, where she says that that food pyramid, or it might have been Robert, I'm not, I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, that food pyramid was more about corporate wealth and government wealth than consumer health. And just like it did in America, all of a sudden, we started getting a lot fatter, and we started to get a lot more chronic illnesses. Um, which, sadly, my family have witnessed firsthand. My dad lost his dad and his mom to cancer. My dad lost his lovely sister, Avis, to cancer in her 50s. And just two months ago, we buried Tom's and two of my daughter's piano teacher, aged just 34, uh, died of cancer. He was humble and lovely, wasn't he? Lovely man. And a few years prior to that, we buried our 22-year-old nanny to our children, again from cancer. Now, I'm sure everybody in this room has got similar stories with their own family and their own friends, and certainly many of you GPs will have lots of stories that are sad stories with your patients. Bring it right back home again. Dad, last year, diagnosed with diabetes type 2, and my mom with early-onset dementia. And this has all come in one or two generations. So we can no longer, I believe, just accept what is unacceptable. We have to change it. And I believe, quite firmly, having researched a lot and spent a lot of time with doctors, and I'm sure we're all singing the same hymn sheet, that most chronic illnesses, whether that be whether it be strokes, whether that be Alzheimer's, diabetes, whether that be heart disease, whether it be obesity or cancer, can all be linked to a poor diet. And I fundamentally believe that the battle we need to fight is to change that eat well guideline because it is anything but an eat well guideline. And I believe we have to change it for two main reasons. The first one is while there is a guideline in place backed by the government, the big food companies can just hide behind poisoning our children and our families, because that's what the guideline allows them to do. And secondly, as GPs and a lot of you in the medical profession, I think it's so difficult for you to fight against something that currently is, is set out in stone. So I believe for the sake of our family, our friends, and our loved ones and your patients, we have to change that Eat Well guideline. But what I'd like to do next, <laughs> this could go horribly wrong, um, so I think Dr. David Unwin's done an amazing job with his team turning something quite visual, because all that hidden sugar in produce, uh, isn't it brilliantly putting it 
onto a PowerPoint. And I said to him when I had a lovely lunch with him a few months ago, gosh, I wish I'd thought of that. Um, and I thought, well, how do we visualize that even more? So I thought, what about I make two glass coffins and I lie my dad in one and my son in the other and let's discuss what food, a bit different with dad and Tom because I've been a, a, a nutrition bore for about four years now, so uh, we, he's, he's got to remember what he used to eat. Um, but Dad can tell you what he does eat because it's difficult bringing up your kids. It's almost impossible to bring up your parents. Um, so, um, right, Tom, you're going to come and jump in here. I might need one of my team to come and help me get my dad into his little glass box. Because um, what we're going to discuss, Tom, put your safety goggles on. Good lad. If you just lie down there for me. Thank you very much. Um, don't worry. If anything goes wrong, there are lots of doctors in the room, Tom. <laughs> Not that anybody has had to rescue anybody out of a glass box before. Are you comfortable, son? Yep. That's absolutely fantastic. Dad? That's going to be difficult. Yeah, shall I go that side? Yeah. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to take all that lovely research that... that Dr. David Unwin has done with his team. And we could try and visualize it. And uh, my family think they've been eating healthily for a long time. So we're not going to look at the crisps and the fizzy pops and all the sugar that we know is sugar. Because we're going to look at some of those hidden sugars. Because at the end of the day, as we've heard already today, sugar is sugar. Whether that comes in the form of fizzy pop or whether that comes in the form of potatoes or rice or pasta, sugar is sugar. And if you have a problem with diabetes or insulin, then what we don't want to be doing is spiking our insulin levels. So I think we'll start. You're right there, Dad. Yeah, I'm fine. I've asked you to do some weird things. <laughs> he sailed across the Atlantic with me with six people, and nobody had ever been on a boat overnight once before ever. So, you know, we, we like taking a few risks, but you risk it with food every day, trust me. Right, Tom, <laughs> you might need to shout loud because you've not got a microphone. Got it. But can you remember what you used to like for breakfast before I became a, a nutrition nut? Uh, I, used to eat, I used to eat cornflakes, but I never added too much sugar. You didn't add too much sugar. Well, that's a good point. Let's see if we can quickly just find where cornflakes... See, it's not scripted, but I know what he does eat, but I don't know what order... Uh, he was going to say anything in. So, in cornflakes, and uh, the, by the way, when you read those things on the side of packaging, uh, it always says 30 grams. Well, I did with Dr. Dan a little experiment the other day, and you put 30 grams in front of even a three year old, and they're screaming for more food. Right? Nobody eats 30 grams of cornflakes. What Tom's portion equated to. Uh, was more like 80 grams, his average portion, and that equates to 22 sugar cubes, the, the equivalent effect on the glucose level inside the body. Well, I've got to ask you, Thomas, how often did you eat that? Six or seven times a week. Six or seven times a week. Well, that, well, let's just go with six, shall we? There are 2,000 sugar lumps in here. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it'd break up like that. You've got spare clothes? <laughs> no? OK. So, there's 2,000 sugar lumps. I don't think we'll even get to the end of this experiment, mate, because that's two, four. That's how much Tom eating, because he just confessed to not putting much sugar on. That's what he ate in sugar in 12 months, hidden inside of cornflakes. Dad, we'll leave you for a little bit, because I don't want to do this to you that's so quickly. Uh, we never had Cokes. So we wouldn't let you have Coke. What about drinks? What do you used to drink? I used to drink uh, orange juice and apple juice. Which one? Just pick one. Uh, orange juice. Orange juice. And how often do you have orange juice? Uh, three to four times a week. Three or four times a week. Let's go for four times a week. Uh, well, you get another 2,000. Pretty much there. It's on 1,700. <laughs> I'm probably going to stop there. I could go on for ages. But that, in just a healthy breakfast that I thought as a dad, because of those guidelines and because of what it said on the packaging, I was poisoning my kids with that much sugar every single morning when I could have been giving them eggs. I could have been giving them eggs and bacon and salmon and things that are healthy and nutritious, but instead I fell for what it said on the label. And that's why we have to change the guidelines. Dad, I'm just going to come over to you. I know you're going to say, I know you're going to say KFC, but I haven't really got anything for KFC. Um, what do you like to eat, Dad? Um, breakfast or what? No, no, di dinner for you. Dinner for you. Let's, dinner. Go, let's go dinner. Uh, curry. Curry, yeah. Okay. Chili. Chili, good. Yeah, I'm going to those. Keep going. <laughs> what, uh, what do you have with it every time? 
chips or rice. Chips or rice. Stick with that. We'll stick with chips or rice. So let's go with rice. So I know my dad, and I measured just recently his rice portion, uh, which was 300 grams uh, in a serving, which equates to 20 cubes of sugar in a serving when he thinks he's eating healthily. Now, for his sake, he, I know he has it like three or four times a week, but I'm not going to throw that much on you, Dad. That's really unfair. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, just, just have, just have, just have, just have, that's rice twice a week, folks. That's rice twice a week uh, for my dad. Dad, what else do you like eating, mate? What about fruit? What sort of fruit do you like? Who yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't see you then. That's Don't worry, right. I'm still here. Uh, what, what, what? Raisins, I love raisins. Raisins, I'm glad you picked that one. Uh, oh, let's go back that way. Raisins. Well, raisins are very full of sugar, Dad, and I know how many you have. Uh, so it's about 10 cubes of sugar, and I know he has it three or four times a week, but let's just go with another 2,000 because he's my dad. <laughs> And I don't want to kill my dad with sugar, so we won't do the whole lot. Uh, right, this is not staged, right? I think the poor banana's had a really tough time already today. We've all slated the banana, but Tom, what do you used to take to school every single day? Banana. Yes, why, Tom? Why do you take it? Because Dad said it was healthy, because we thought it was healthy every single day. Because uh, he's a bit, you know, fitter, we're not going to worry too much about it. Just... You're getting the idea now. So, these are guidelines that we're faced with today. And uh, if uh, we keep damaging my child with spikes of insulin because of the food he's eating, at some stage, there's a really big possibility, like my daddy will come become diabetic. This is a real, real, real problem. Uh, we could have gone on and on looking at raisins, looking at... Oh, here's my favourite one. We did this the other day. We took a subway, we walked to our local subway, and we asked for just the bread. They went, one butter, no, just the bread, we need to weigh this properly. So we took the 12-inch subway, which both my son used to have and my dad loves, because they're very good because they put salad in the middle. Uh, and the bread alone weighs 150 grams, which turns into just the bread on a subway into 15 sugar cubes equivalent of glucose inside the bloodstream. That, my friends, is frightening because we think we're making the healthy options, putting the salads in the middle, but we're not. And just like Einstein said, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expect different results. I think we have to do one thing and one thing only at the end of this conference is we have to collaborate together to change the guidelines. And my final bit, I would just ask all of you that are parents in the room just to stop and think for one moment what it is that's most important to you as parents. And I would assume that everybody would come back with for my children to be healthy, for my children to be happy, for my children to live longer. Well, the only way that's going to happen is if we feed them the right foods, and that comes through education and the right, correct guidelines. What I would like to do at the end of this conference or during the next two days, if you would just, we, we, we run a not-for-profit, uh, um, yeah, think about my future. So that's got to change. We quickly have a look at that. You've got sugar everywhere. We keep telling, you know, low salt. We know salt isn't really the enema, enemy anymore. Why does, it say, why does it say lean means? Well, why, it doesn't need to be lean, does it? We know that fat's not the problem. Look, look how big those bananas are. They're huge, right? We know and that bananas, raisins. And, uh, look, it's just wrong and it's poisoning our family, it's poisoning our children. We have to change the guidelines. If you can register your support with us outside at Health Daddy, I will work with Sam and the PHC and we will get lots of your support together. We'll then get lots of support from the consumers and let's get this thing changed because it just needs to change. Thank you all for putting on a great conference. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're right there, Pop. <laughs> He's still breathing, all right? He's still breathing. Oh, so, Steve, yeah. ask anybody out there uh, who would like a sugar daddy. <laughs>